Hey gorgeous Gemini and welcome to the floor of my apartment. Here we are. And also happy birthday. Welcome to our Gemini season reading. We are in the heart of Gemini season as we do this June 2021 chat here today. What a powerful Gemini season this is too because this is the final Gemini season with the North Node in your sign. Um, we're getting into the last third of that transit. It also means that the eclipses are happening. When the node is the North Node or the South Node is in your sign, it means the eclipses are happening to your sign and to your opposing sign, which in this case is Sagittarius. So it also means you have an eclipse in your sign this month and we have Mercury retrograde during Gemini season this June. So there's a lot going on specifically with your sign. And this means that this is this is a potent time and a potent Gemini season to check in with yourself and your process. And whereas a lot of other people may be feeling this as having to kind of reassess different aspects of their lives or how they connect to their lives, this is going to be about your personal growth with yourself right? This is going to be about how you feel about yourself, how you feel about yourself when you're sitting alone in a quiet room. Who are you then without everything, all these other bits and bobs and pieces, right? So it's a very intimate time this June. And the, those first three weeks of June, as we work through the sun moving through Gemini, and as we work through the solar eclipse in your sign, the new moon on June 10th, and as we work through this kind of powerful season, uh, it's going to be a time where you may notice that there's just like a really strong emphasis on review, on reflection. And the note that came up for me when I looked at this month was pretty simple. It was, yes, it was about the major refresh. It was also a, a prompt and it's one that I've just been working with uh, in the last couple of days as I was working on your notes, I decided to work with this as well. It's really interesting what happens. So the prompt is, this is the beginning of the sentence and then you can fill out the rest. A story I am scared to let go of about myself is. <sighs> you know, so often we talk about the stories that are given to us as small children. We talk about, you know, how culture creates our identities. Yes, all of those things. And I realized like I very rarely sit with the stories that maybe I've gotten a little comfortable with. Maybe they um, have made it possible for me to kind of sit back, stay in some nice comfortable lanes, <laughs> not be as vivacious or bright and shining bright as I want to be. And it's a really intimate little practice to do that. Um, and that's going to be it. These stories are going to be ones that are not necessarily about other people or who other people have told you to be, but just maybe little, little ones that have snuck along that make you feel safe or comfortable, but that you also feel kind of like you're chafing against a little bit. Right? So that's kind of the, the vibe of this June. A lot of things are moving around as well. We're starting in a lot of the outer planet retrogrades. So I believe Saturn's already retrograde. Um, this month, um, Neptune and Jupiter are both going to go retrograde in Pisces, your fellow mutable sign and your 10th house of like what you're doing in life. Oh, six of swords. There's a journal prompt right there for you. A story I'm scared to let go of about myself is um, and you know, those Neptunian and Pisces and Jup Jupiterian energies in Pisces retrograde is just going to be a great time to review. Like, who do you feel you have to be in the world? How do you want to show up in the world? What do you want your identity to be in the world? And I feel like those questions can only come secondarily to who you want to be to yourself. Because, you know, if we ask the questions about who we need to be for other people, who we need to be for the world, who we need to be for our reputation, our legacy, our all of those things first, and then we ask who we want to be with ourselves, we're going to get all stressed out. Um, 
I've tried to do that before. It doesn't work so well. So this is really these first three weeks of the month before the solstice, before the sun moves into your neighboring sign of cancer, before and during this eclipse season and during this Mercury retrograde is going to be a really potent time for you. Now, as we get into that time where it's June 20th, the sun moves into cancer, we have the solstice. Uh, midsummer, we have a full moon in Capricorn in your house of transformation. Um, and then we have, you know, by the end of June, Mars and Venus are both moved into Leo. So finally, another card wanted to come out seven of pentacles. Very interesting. These are very ruminative cards, very reflective cards. And it, it makes sense, you know, I'm not saying that there's not going to be movement and vivacity and playfulness in June, because I think there's going to be a lot of that. Um, I think that the way we want to approach movement and playfulness and vivacity and excitement and new Ace of Pentacles and new adventures and new information is by reflecting with ourselves, is by taking that 20 minutes out of your day to just check in it is by asking those questions it is by getting comfortable with our own inner dialogue and that actually facilitates a lot of fun outside of ourselves and with us and interactive with us and so whenever you know i say something like "Ooh, this is a this is a time of knight of pentacles a lot of pentacles energy gemini a lot of message there around grounding self-worth self-value um perception looking around right there's so much air energy there's so much of this like free-flowing gemini energy we have to have a little groundedness but i find that you know when we when we really sit with ourselves and we really commune with ourselves this is what facilitates movement in our lives and so whenever i'm talking about times of deep self-reflection like this mercury retrograde like this eclipse season like this um time of of internal introspection. I'm not saying that's a time where you're just going to be sitting in your room hiding out. Some of you, maybe that's what sounds good right now. Maybe you're needing a little extra time to recharge or prepare for this new solar year. That totally makes sense too. And if you're somebody who's eager to get out there, to connect, to fall in love, to play, to build new things, to move, to start new careers, to meet new people, um, there's nothing that says that these these transits or these energies are precluding you from doing any of that. The doorway through which you get to all that good stuff is in starting with yourself. That's always the the entrance door to any great party. It's always the way. And I just imagine, you know, we all, we're always looking for the doors and knocking on the doors and trying to get into all these different parts of ourselves or like parties and connections and all these things when the door was always just like, inside. So if we just step inside, open that door, so much more is connected to us. Okay, let's talk through these cards. They're really powerful. I think these two together speak volumes about kind of the, the quality of, of energy, I think that is important during this Mercury retrograde during this Gemini season. Um, with the North Node in your sign with the with the eclipses happening so personally with you. It's that six of swords to me is really that that prompt that journaling prompt that came up as my message to you today, which is a story I am scared to let go of about myself is I think the six of swords is one of those cards that activates courage, because it's about putting your foot in a boat that's taking you to new horizon, and letting go of something that's a little scary to let go of. And it's not always about other people or scenarios or literal things and swords energy is always about the way we use our minds and gemini's this is like your your field <laughs> you guys are the masters of this um and so the six of swords is about letting go right of any any thoughts any stories any things that feel like they don't fit quite right anymore. And I love Six of Swords. I think it's a card to check in with, an energy to check in with regularly, every month, I would say, if not every week, um, in little bits through time. So I love that energy. And Seven of Pentacles is kind of the other side of that, which is like, okay, what, you know, kind of ideas or stories or identities are not working for me anymore. Also, what am I no longer wanting to put my blood, sweat, and tears into? What 
looking around, assessing where you're putting your energy, where you're using your precious time, where you're using your precious resources. Does it feel good? Does it feel icky? You know, I like to really like seven of pentacles to me. It's important when I see that card to check through your body. So if you have a lot on your plate, you're feeling overwhelmed, or you have some places in your life where you're feeling a bit torn about, should I keep doing it? Should I let it go? Should I keep seeing this person? <laughs> should I keep doing this job? Should I keep doing this project? Should I keep trying to be, you know, this type of creative or, you know, whatever the, the questions may be. It's a great time to like list all those out, all the ones that maybe you're not sure about, even the ones that you are sure about and feel through your body. Notice how does it feel when you think about doing each of those things and writing out what you physically feel when you think about them. This is such a great way to get very simple, clear wisdom that'll let you know what you want to keep tending in your garden, what you want to keep growing, taking with you into this new solar year, into this, into this post eclipse season time where you've shed a skin and you are getting acquainted with who you are becoming and what really just does not serve your body and where you have to force yourself and lie to yourself in order to get yourself to do those things. And that's, you know, just assessing that, just noticing it is very, very powerful. Here's the thing. There is reward to be had in that. And as we move into cancer season and as we have the sun move into cancer and we have that full moon in Capricorn and we are starting to move into that energy about self-value, self-worth, self-mothering, self-nurturing, um, for me, the rewards are going to come in steady and consistent. Ace of Pentacles and Knight of Pentacles. The good things in our lives lives are tend not to be erratic, random all over the place, spotty. They, they're kind of always there. I mean, even when I would say if you apply this to a creative process, it's, it's tricky, right? Cause the creative process is really scary and vulnerable. And there are days when you like work and work and work on your creative thing and you're just tired at the end of it. And you've just painted like three paintings that just turned out not the way you wanted them to. And you feel like you haven't done anything, but there's a steadiness in that you still love it. You still wake up the next day and you're thinking about it. Still, you want to be doing it. Um, there's a steadiness in people who want to be in your life, who feel good in your life. There's a steadiness with the things that really matter to us. Those are the, where the beauty lie and the pentacles and Knight of Pentacles, this is about simplicity. And if there's one thing that I notice uh, often about mutable energy, which I work with a lot of in my personal chart, um, it's, it's wanting to, to do and be everything and everyone and explore a lot, which I love. I think that's a really positive quality to mutable energies like Gemini. But it can also mean that you feel overwhelmed, that you have a lot on your plate, that you feel like you're a hundred different people and like you can't quite feel that centeredness, that softness, that slowness, so that you can really savor and feel that like peacefulness and that joy that comes from slowing down and really nurturing in. And so I think this month is really going to be directing your sights towards those things that are consistent, that are clear, that always show up time and again, not the erratic things, not the surprising things, not the adrenaline inducing things, not the ick inducing things, but the things that like come from like your bones. And it's a feeling I've noticed when these things are right for us, they may be intimidating. They may be a little scary. They may be vulnerable. They may be all of those things. They might give us some butterflies in the stomach, but it's going to feel as though it is coming up and out from like your heart, from your gut, from your bones right? Like from the core of who you are, it's just flowing out of you. And also at the same time, like it is coming to find you and that there is this strange feeling where it's like, this is from me, but it's also from, from toward me. Those are the things you're going to be wanting to look at. So anything that's happening this month is going to be directing your gaze to that. So notice when something's getting blocked or stopped from happening or where you're feeling like a little bit stuck or you're feeling a little bit like, not sure how I feel about this. Notice where that breadcrumb trail is leading you because you're getting asked to really look where you're going next. Cause this is a major rebirth. So you may even be surprised by what comes out of this Gemini season and out of this powerful June that we are having. 
there's really nothing this june is going to be just a really unique kernel of time that i think we'll look back on all of us all signs everybody um with a lot of like strong memories of um i just want to wish you all such a gorgeous solstice i wish you all a beautiful gemini season may it be full of beauty creativity true love connection joy playfulness healing physical healing trust in your body trust in your soul trust in yourself uh, may it be filled with some beautiful loyalty connections and vividness that really suits you and, and serves you and lets you feel like you can be your full self. I want all of that for you. Um, I'm going to be doing so much fun stuff over on my Patreon in June. We're going to be working through eclipse season over there, doing the activations, working with these outer planet retrogrades I mentioned, um, working through the Mercury retrograde every single week. I'm going to be offering up ways to reflect on that. So if you're looking for support and guidance, I would love to see you there. We're going to be having so much fun. I will leave the link below. You can also find me on my website and on Instagram. I will leave all those goodies below as well as Pink Lynn's shop. And I will see you all for July's magic. And I hope you like, subscribe, and stick around, my friends. <laughs>